Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Music of the Week. I don't have much to cover. Again, if you hear weird noises, there's my cat eating. I should put him some fresh food down in a bit because he is running a bit low. But I have about six albums to go through, almost said five, so let's go through them as quick as we can. We begin with August Burns Red and their newest album, Death Below, their first in about three years. I quite like August Burns Red, you know, I think they're one of the most uh, very consistent American metalcore bands. And this might be, yeah, just another fucking great showcase of the working of this one. And A, really loved pretty much everything about it. Um, in terms of its instrumentation, it's some of the best work. And lead guitarist J.D. Brubaker is absolutely fantastic. I love Jake Lowe's as the vocalist as well. His clean singing has improved a lot, by the way. I just really like Jake Lowe's. He's just a really cool dude. These are just a really cool band. And I love how they've been able to flesh out their sound a bit more. This album is one of their longer takes too, but it packs in so much. Um, that's versatile. And hello. <laughs> and yeah my, my cat's here so now this video has improved massively um but yeah no the production wise it's really great too i think they work with some people that they've been working with for a while i could be wrong about that uh, structure wise it is again a bit long over 50 minutes but it does reward you because it does fill the pacing with a lot of really fun twists and turns. Some things that the band hasn't really done before as well. Because they would usually keep things mostly the same. But no, this time they decided to mix shit up and make it a bit more interesting. Lyrically, it's still about their uh, same themes as well. Of like, self-love. With a bit more of a mental health theme, it can go a little bit dark at times. But there's still a good light of hope to it. Which is something that August Burns Red have always been able to bounce well. So yeah, just go and listen to it. It's August Burns Red, so you know it's good. And their new album is really goddamn good. Next we have Baby Metal with their fourth album. The very crappily titled the other one like it's not that baby metal album it's the other one you know i don't get why they decided to call it the other one but i like baby metal i'm giving this one a b i thought it was very fun you know it's what baby metal usually do it's one of their more serious albums to be honest i think it's probably their most serious it's got more of a sort of like epic power metal vibe to it um, it's still very strong though, it's got much chunkier instrumentation, um, without being overly heavy, it's still got that nice melody to it, it's got some really good organic production, the performances are still fantastic as well. I would say that the clean singing has uh, improved a lot, but then again, the girls don't really do any heavy screaming, so the singing has, you know, is as good as it ever was, maybe a little bit better in some places, I like the performances of the backing band as well, um, production wise it's really good, structure wise it can maybe drag a little bit, but it's still got some really fun stuff that Baby Metal haven't really tried before. They've sort of shared the more kawaii element of the kawaii metal thing and gone for a more traditional approach, um, which actually does kind of work for them, but I do want to see them implement the more fun and cutie stuff. However, for them trying something new, I didn't hate it. I thought it was a really good attempt at it. So yeah, give this one a shot too if you can find the time. Next we have probably one of the bigger albums I've covered all year, Fallout Boy with their new album, So Much for Stardust, and yeah, no, this one gets an A+. I thought it was absolutely fantastic return to form. Although, hot take, I didn't hate... Most of their return stuff. Mania was kind of forgettable, but I liked elements of American Beauty, American Psycho, and Save Rock and Roll. I thought Save Rock and Roll was, you know, pretty good in some places. I liked the Young Blood Chronicle music videos, but yeah, no, this album gets an A+. It is fun to see, to hear them go back, sorry, to their more sort of like Infinity on High-esque slash Take This to Your Grave slash... There was another album in between. Fuck. Under the Court Tree, from Under the Court Tree, that was it. It's nice to see them going back to that sort of style, but with some of their more modern sensibilities as well, the songwriting is, is as good as ever was. Pete Wentz, not a great bass, is still a top-notch lyricist. Uh, Patrick Stump, his vocals sound way fucking better than they ever have, which is saying something considering how good of a singer he is for this genre of more puppy punky stuff. Um, yeah, no, this is just really good. I like the production as well. It's got Neil Avron on it for the first time in a while. Um, Structure-wise, it's got a lot of really fun stuff to it. It can maybe get a bit repetitive at times, but it's got some really fun themes that are executed well, and the band just sound as great as they ever have. Again, absolute corker of an album. Haha. <laughs> and uh, yeah, go and check this one out. It's really good. Next we have another sort of returning band with Gideon and their newest album More Power More Pain and I'll be honest I saw some reviews that about this that were mostly positive some were not keen on the more new metal elements um I felt like they maybe could have leaned onto them a lot more this album gets a C because I can't remember a goddamn thing about it like it was heavy metalcore and apparently some of the heavy stuff Gideon's done in a while. I've heard some snippets of Gideon before but never a full album so I didn't really know what to expect. And this was their first one in four years so they did have plenty of time but I don't know. It, I don't remember anything about it. And I did say to myself I'd go and listen back to it but would I want to go and listen back to an album that I can't recall anything about in the hopes of trying to recall something about it? Maybe? But I, I don't know. Like, it's, it's you know... 
I can't, I, I literally can't think of anything to say about it. Nothing bad, you know, but nothing good either. I just, you know, can't think of anything that was truly remarkable either way. I like the album cover and, you know, Gideon's putting out music, which I guess is nice, but yeah, I don't know. This is the lowest grade of the episode, and I can't think of a goddamn thing to say about it, so maybe give it a go. You might be able to retain more than I did. Next up, we got a good old bit of hardcore punk. We have Judiciary and their newest album, Flesh and Blood. In fact, I think it might be their second album. They have, they're not a band that's been around for a terribly long time. Um, but yeah, this one gets a B plus. I loved quite a lot of this. I thought it was some fantastic stuff. Just very straight to the core, straight to the point, hardcore punk, you know? Um, something I would expect from a band with such a cool name as Judiciary. You have to admit, it's a fucking badass name. I really like the themes that are executed as well. Some very good political stuff, some very good, like, um, personal and mental stuff as well. Um, the instrumentation just fucking heavy as hell. Leaning more on the side of metalcore, but I could still consider this very much hardcore punk in terms of its presentation and energy. The production is really good. Surprisingly slick in some places, which I wasn't expecting, but still left abrasive enough. Again, very abrasive album, you know, in terms of structuring as well, but done in a very intentional way, and yeah, now the band have got the snarling attitude to pull this off. I really, really like this, and I'm going to look forward to more Judiciary, because they're a band I've heard good things about, and this is only their second album, so I'm um, looking forward to whatever they drop next, because this was some good stuff. Also, the performances are really great as well, so yeah, go check this one out. And finally, from a band that's not been around long, to a band that won't be around much longer, we have Project 86, one of my all-time favourite bands, with their second-to-last album, Omni Part 1. I believe Omni Part 2 will be their final release. Um, I believe they're recording it right now, or at least they're hoping to. Um, yeah, this one gets uh, an A+. Project 86 are one of my favourite and most consistent bands, and they take so many risks on this one. For example, it's one of the heaviest outputs in a while since the Truthless Heroes, which is probably, you know, not my favourite one by them, but I should listen back to it to get a second opinion. You know, since the, like, Truthless Heroes slash Songs to Burning Bridges by Era. You know, very much like heavy stuff from then, although people think that they weren't good because they, were he because they weren't as heavy on, like, albums that would follow, even though they've been great for fucking years, just gotta listen to it um but yeah no like uh instrumentation wise very heavy very well timed i love how a lot of the guitar work is very melodic over the heavy stuff i love the how it mixes the post hardcore and all the certain metal stuff with some more like weird technological elements because the album is a concept album about a dystopian futuristic technologically driven world and omni is apparently like an evil company and the main character of the album is like this mad evil scientist who wants to create a race of bionic um, cybernetic human beings. I'm not really fully sure, um, but it's a very interesting concept to read through and very easy to find on AZ lyrics. So, sorry, AZ lyrics, because, you know, British have got to say it like Zed. So, go and find it. It's very easy. You can find it on Genius as well, failing that. Um, instrument, I've already said the instrumentation wise. Performance wise, it's absolutely great as well. This is some of Andrew Schwab's best vocal work and some great character work from him actually playing a character for an album because it's not something that you usually get from Project 86. In fact, I think this might be their first concept album since Truthless Heroes, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but much better executed, obviously. Production wise, very organic. It's released on the band's own label and I like the, the, the decision that they made to do all of the less stuff themselves. So it was presumably self produced and again, very organic organic and mixes in the sound very very well pays attention to lovely little details fantastic layering and texturing and structure wise maybe it's a little bit long again it's over 50 minutes but it does not waste a single second in telling its story in punctuating it with heavy instrumental work and we're showcasing great songs like tartarus kiss metatropolis virtual signal zero is greater than one and probably my favorite song in spoonwalker holy hell spoonwalker is such a great song it's just a bunch of great songs and this is possibly a contender for one of my favorite albums of 2023, maybe my album of the year so far. I don't really know. There's still, uh, you know, there's still like nine months left to go in this year. But yeah, definitely go check this one out. It's pretty fucking great. And that'll about do it. That was all six of these albums covered. I will go from least favorite to most favorite. So least favorite would probably be Gideon's new album because I can't remember a goddamn thing about it. Then maybe Baby Metal, then Judiciary, then uh, August Burns Red, then Fallout Boy, then Project 86. But again, as always, you should always listen to these albums at least once and don't just take my opinion for it because that inspires a more uh, interesting conversation because, you know, you might have found something more about Gideon's new album that I couldn't find. I should maybe go back to listening to, to it to try and glean something from it. I don't know. If I can remember anything, I'll probably tell you in a future video or I might forget. Anyway, um, that'll about do it for my uh, delusional ranting. The next thing I'll see you for will be tomorrow night's The Go Home Show for Locked and Loaded. That's going to be a lot of fun. 
And yeah, that'll about do it. And then over the weekend, obviously, more Let's Playing of Ori in the Blind Forest. So I'll see you all uh, for that. And on Sunday for a possible, uh, possible fight in the right view. So as always, thank you for watching. You're awesome. Bye-bye.